attitudes, no egos involved. And these guys, they just play for the love of the game. There, there's good players out there, and we're going to try to feed the ball on offense to guys that we think can score. And on defense, we're going to try to you know, keep and contain in the running game first and not give anything up cheap. It's a new league with some familiar names. Three-time All-Pro defensive end Simeon Rice returns to pro football tonight, anchoring the New York Sentinels defense. And countering him, former Super Bowl MVP Dexter Jackson back in action, heading up the Florida Tuskers secondary. Welcome to the United Football League on HDNet, New York at Florida. On what has been a steamy day here in Florida at the Citrus Bowl, some rain earlier tonight, but the sun peeped out about an hour ago, perhaps that is a good omen to get football underway here tonight in Orlando. Good evening, everyone. Kenny Rice, glad that you could be with us. I am delighted to be working with a legend as a player and broadcaster in Paul McGuire. And we get ready for some football right now as you see the home team, Tuskers, taking the field, Paul. Well, you know, it isn't by happenstance that, th that these two offense or these two coaches, head coaches, pick two of the best defensive players for their teams. Okay? Teddy Cottrell. Defensive coordinator for years in the National Football League. Now he has a defensive coordinator, and that's Don Blackman. But on the other side, Jim Haslam, who has been a defensive coordinator and a head coach in the National Football League, he has decided to be the defensive coordinator for the Florida team. And I can tell you right now, you're going to see these two defenses flying. We uh, usually about this time of year, you would think uh, the defense compared to the offense, how does that go? But in about three and a half weeks to put it all together, it's really an interesting mix. It is an interesting mix. And, and, and the nice part about it is defensively, what happens, and we're going to show you during the course of the game, the defensive linemen, there are four of them at all times, and they must have their hands down on the ground. What you say, we will show you during the course of the game. All right, and joining us throughout this game are sideline reporters. We have Natalie Taylor on the Florida sideline, Ron Kruk on the New York sideline. Good evening to you two, and let's start with you, Ron. How are things there on the New York bench? Well, as you mentioned, hot. But you guys also mentioned that we have two head coaches tonight that think defensive first. But New York Sentinel head coach Teddy Cottrell, he believes he has a quarterback that he thinks should be playing on Sunday. Quinn Gray has spent several years in the NFL as a backup and part-time player. And when he has seen action in 12 games, he threw 13 touchdown passes. This guy is a playmaker and someone to keep an eye on tonight, but he will be tested by a very tough Tusker defense. For more on the Florida offense, let's go across the field and Natalie Taylor. You want to talk playmakers? Well, Florida may have the best backfield in the UFL, led by two running backs, Tatum Bell and Michael Pittenham. Both of those guys didn't only see playing time in the NFL, but they contribute a lot to their respective teams. And just like many of the players here in the UFL, they hope to have a strong showing in this league so they can one day make it back to the National Football League. Thanks, Natalie and Ron. You will recognize some of these players instantly. We're sure of that. Some you'll say, yes, I remember that guy when he played. That kind of football coming up. A lot of NFL experience on display here tonight in this, the opener for the Florida Tuskers and the New York Sentinels. And we'll be back with the kickoff coming up from Orlando in just a few moments. You're watching the UFL on HDNet. <laughs> Welcome back to the UFL on HDNet. I got it. And welcome back to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, as we get ready for United Football League action here on HDNet. The New York Sentinels visiting the Florida Tuskers. These teams know each other well, though. They've been sharing the same practice facility for the last three and a half weeks. New York in the black and white and in the teal, the home team, Florida Tuskers. New York winning the toss. They have elected to receive. You decide to take the ball and not defer. Now, even though the defenses are a little bit further ahead than the offense, you got to find out what you have on offense. 
And uh, as, as we talked with uh, Ted Cottrell yesterday, the head coach of New York, he was a little curious what he might have exactly on offense. Although, as we heard Ron mention, he's incredibly high on his quarterback, Quinn Gray. And Gray and company will go on the attack first. And teeing it up is Matt Bryant, formerly with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Standing back is Chris Barkley, number 24, one of the talented running backs for New York. And a man who had a kickoff return to beat the Kansas City Chiefs during his days with the Browns in the NFL. And tonight we're going to talk a lot about these guys. And we've been saying in uh, the show before that, you know, a lot of these guys played in the NFL. But a lot, most of these guys have played on taxi squads, not actually played in games. You know, there have been a lot of them that have, but most of them haven't. And the game's underway. Barkley at the two. Straight up the middle, across the 20, cuts back, 21, spins his way up to the 32-yard line. 30-yard return for Chris Barkley to get things started for New York. As you look at Quinn Gray, who played at Florida A&M for the Rattlers of Florida A&M, and a man who has seen action in the National Football League. And as you said, Teddy Cottrell is so high on this guy. I mean, you know, we, as soon as you talk to a coach about a player and you say, well, what does he think? Can he make all the throws? Can he do all the things? And he looked at you and that little gleam in his eye and he said, he can do it all. LeBrandon Tofield and Charles Alley in the backfield. First and 10 at the 32. This is Tofield going right up the middle and right into the arms of McKinley Boykin. Maybe a yard on that at best. That would be giving him the benefit of the doubt as we take a look now at the offense. And we look across the front line, some experience there, especially with the play of Metter, the way he's been coming along in this three weeks of camp on that offensive front. And Steve Sanders, and the speedy Thorpe, the receivers. And Tofield and Ali in the backfield. Great. Throwing. Complete first down and more. With it is Thorpe. Thorpe in a foot race down the sideline. Inside the 21 man to beat. And he could not. As running him down from behind is one of the fastest guys on the Florida team. Darius Vanette. 53 yards on the play. But well, you know what's nice about this play. Now look where the ball is thrown. Thorpe, it's out in front of him. It's behind the linebackers and in front of the safety men. This gives now gives Thorpe a chance to run with the ball. That was a perfect pass. On the money, Gray in his first pass, and Grafonzo Thorpe does the rest as he gets a breather on the sideline. Down to the 14 after that 53-yard pass and run. First and 10. Sentinels looking impressive in the early going. They pitch back. To Tofield. Gets close to the 10. McCarrigal moving up to make the hit. Three yards on the play. There's some pretty good speed, Kenny, on this Florida defense. And to try to make a living running the ball wide against these guys, I wouldn't really try it. I mean, you've got you've got to go straight at the defenses because you know they're all again, all four defensive linemen are down with their hands down. And only five guys can blitz in the, in the ball game. Second and seven from the 11. Gray throwing, broken up. On the slant, pass intended for Ryan Hogue. And nice defense in a very strong secondary of Vanette, Andrews, Jackson, and Brown. You know, this ball is thrown, but just take a look at the play on the outside. That's Vanette, I believe, that makes the stop. Knocking the ball down. That's just playing the ball. That's, that's perfect defense. Two big plays for Darius Vanette already to run down Thorpe, preventing a touchdown, and to knock that one away from Hogue. It brings up a third and seven at the 11. Gray again, throwing for Thorpe, touchdown. Crafonzo Thorpe hauls it in, 11 yards on the touchdown, and they made it look easy. Any questions about 
the Sentinels offense answered on the opening drive. Well, look where this ball is thrown. This ball is thrown back to the outside where the only guy that has a chance to get the ball is Thorpe. The def defender had no chance whatsoever. That was the perfect pass. And when we asked Teddy Cottrell, can he throw them all? So far, he can't. If you're to check in for the point after, and it's there, 7-0 on their opening series. The New York Sentinels looking impressive, and now we'll get to see the Sentinels' Simeon Rice on defense against Florida when we come back. Welcome back to the Citrus Bowl with wide receiver Crefonzo Thorpe, and apparently your timing with your quarterback, Quinn Gray, is, is on spot right now. Yeah, we work, we've been working very hard. You know, we didn't have OTAs and training camp or like a mini camp or whatnot. So we're working hard with the time. And I mean, Quinn's a great quarterback. You know, he's been around a long time and he sees the same thing that we see a lot out there at receiver. Fonzo, quickly tell us about the touchdown. Describe it for us. A real simple play, actually, just X9 or a fade route. You know, and I was able to get my hands on it. Quinn saw the cornerback playing over the top. He threw me back shoulder, great pass. That's the way you wanted to start the season off. Congratulations. Back upstairs to Kenny and Paul. Willie Andrews takes it, gets to the 25, still on his feet, out across the 30 to around the 31. Andrews, who will see action in the secondary, gets 20 yards on that carry. And now Brooks Bollinger and company go to work on offense against Simeon Rice and company after watching New York with an impressive five-play drive highlighted by that 54-yard pass from Gray to Thorpe, and then Gray capping it off 11 yards with the touchdown to Thorpe as you look at Brooks Bollinger. Bollinger with Tatum Bell and Andy Pennick in the backfield. This is Bell on the delay, gets about two yards right in the heart of the defense. And there to greet him, Simeon Rice. You know, when you look at this defense and you see Simeon Rice, number 97, now he's, he, he plays with his hand down. Like I said, all four linemen, have, defensive linemen, have to put their hand down. But this is the way he always played. So he well, always was a down defensive end. Second and nine. Play action. Bollinger flips it out. It is complete to his big tight end. That is Jeremy Wiggins. Wiggins two times led the Minnesota Vikings in receiving and moved into the starting lineup actually this week because of Keith Heinrich's injury as we take a look at a lot of experience on that front line, including Murkowski, who's part of two championship teams with the Patriots. And Petiti was a guy that played with the Dallas Cowboys. Again, a lot of these guys, they have a lot of experience and of course, Tatum Bell, the thousand yard rusher when he's with the Broncos. It is a third and four situation. Going in motion is Jason Foster, who comes into the game on third down on the slant. First down on the throw and the catch to Chad Gessner. There's Gessner, the sure handed 6 5 receiver. 11 yards and a first down for Florida. Well, you know, you're watching these quarterbacks put the ball exactly where it has to. Watch Gessner now. He's inside, the safety is not getting any help. The corner's waiting for the safety to give him some help, and he got none. And that was battle number 27, was the safety that was supposed to come up and never got there. One thing that is suspect about the defense of New York, as Ted Cottrell told us yesterday, is the secondary. So much so that, in essence, they have uh, what would be professional walk-ons. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Handoff goes over on the left side. Michael Pittman carries for the first time, and he carries it well into New York territory. Gets 11 on it. You know, Michael Pittman, you watch him, and I know people have watched him in the National Football League, but this guy, you talk about running with a purpose. Watch Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman has, has, knows exactly where he is all the time. He's got great balance and strength. And great hands, I might add. And Pittman, part of that deep backfield, we've talked about that, perhaps the deepest in the league right now. First and 10 from the 40, Bollinger is going deep. And overshoots his man, Tay Biddle, one of the fastest players on the team. Oh, man. Uh -huh. got to look at this when they look at the film. And he said, Biddle, I have you. You're wide open. Look at Biddle. He takes a post move and then back to the outside. There is just no chance for battle to get to him, number 27. And this ball was just overthrown. And Biddle, if you think he looks fast even in slow motion replay, he was an All-American track star during his football days as well at Mississippi. 
Here it is, second and ten from the New York 40. Bollinger again, fires it out, complete to the tight end. You notice something that we're seeing tonight, Kenny, that we saw in Thursday's night, night's game in Vegas, is how quick the quarterbacks are getting the ball out. The, the, the one pass to Biddle was a long pass, but that one to, to Thorpe that was over the middle by New York was a short pass that he ran afterwards. Most of these passes are quick releases. And Jim Haslett said, you know what we're gonna try to do is get the ball to the guys that can score. <laughs> that pass was to Frank Murphy, who's one of the tight ends that joined the team just this week, a former star out of Kansas State. And it is third and six, and a timeout asked for the first of the game. It's taken by the home team, Florida Tuskers. We'll have a break. New York leading at 7-0. Can the Tuskers answer? We'll find out when we come back to Orlando. Third and six for Florida at the New York 36. Bollinger under center. Gessner in motion. Good protection, throwing over the middle to Gessner. Complete first down and then some. Gessner takes it inside the 15. You know, you're talking about the perfect passes that are being thrown. Bollinger this time, when he throws it to Gessner, take a look where he throws it. It's behind the linebacker and in front of the safety. The linebackers, they, there were, there were just a four-man rush. The linebackers have to get back in zone, and they didn't do it. And the linebacker that time was number 54, Wallace, and he's got to get back. Paul Pratt making the play after that pickup of 23, first and 10 from the 13. They'll keep it on the ground this time, trying to gut the corner, getting tripped up a bit. That is Tatum Bell, who picks up five. Tatum Bell is, is really such an interesting story. I mean, the guy who was drafted by the Denver Broncos in the very first day of training camp, he breaks his finger. I mean, and then, you know, and people that just, you know, because of the size of Tatum Bell, he's 5'11 and 213 Oklahoma State, but he played out there when they had some great, uh, some great running backs. Barry Sanders, I mean, come on. On second and five at the eight, they will keep it on the ground. Maybe a yard for Bell on that. And Bell in his rookie year led the AFC rookies in rushing and finished fourth overall in the NFL. And when it was mentioned Bell's here and Michael Pittman got excited and Shad Williams got excited and Pennant got excited, part of that deep backfield. Now on third and five, ball at the eight, the tenth play of this drive for the Florida Tuskers. All right, here's the spread formation. When they spread, there's nobody with the quarterback. And just remember, only five guys can blitz on defense. And they blitzed and got him from the outside, and that was a linebacker. Under pressure, getting in was Williams first. Nathan Williams, Wallace charging in, but Williams is the one that brings him down. Take a look on your right-hand side. You'll see Williams come in. They're just, they just did not block him. Not enough people got to him. He's on the outside. He just comes around the tackle and beats him to the ball. Petiti, number 78, was the tackle. And now they'll attempt a 35-yard field goal. Matt Bryant attempting. Kick is up. And it is wide right, something they're familiar with on many levels in the state of Florida. And it remains 7-0. New York able to hold off Florida on their drive. Sentinels will be back on attack when we come back. Six forty-four to go on a muggy night in Orlando here in the first quarter. The Florida Tuskers hosting the New York Sentinels. Sentinels lead at 7 0 as they get ready for their second offensive series after stopping Florida, who in 11 plays, ate off five minutes of clock, but missed a 35 yard field goal. So now Quinn Gray and company go back in action, and they looked like they'd been playing together for about two years the way they moved in that first series. And what you really like about Quinn Gray throwing the ball. They're not asking him to go deep with the ball. They're letting him get into a comfort zone. 
throw short passes, six yards, seven yards, eight yards. It's going to just set up something deep later on. He's got plenty of time. Let him relax. They got a 7 nothing lead. He's doing fine. And Gray has lived up to the billing that his coach, Cottrell, was telling us as you look at uh, Jim Haslett on the Florida sideline. Kind of interesting watching two old defensive coordinators go at each other. <laughs> And the defense of Florida tested repeatedly in that opening drive by New York. Tofield the setback. Gray a little flip and some miscommunications on that. You know, it, and you can see it right away because what Gray did, the quarterback, when he threw it, the first thing he did with his right arm was it just that motion in get inside. I'm throwing it inside. Get the play. Second and ten from the 25. Ali returns to the backfield. Great handoff. Tofield up the middle. Fighting, still churning for yards and picks up about three. And he was earning it the old fashioned way, was LeBrandon Tofield. And moving in to make the tackle was Odell Thurman. And here's the down, <clears throat> excuse me, that the defenses really have to be careful of. Again, I hate to keep bringing this, but it's true. All four defensive linemen have to have their hands on the ground. And the guy that's going to blitz can only blitz outside the ends. He cannot blitz up the middle. And he has to almost declare himself. Now you see a linebacker sitting up on the line of scrimmage. Third and seven from the 28. Good protection for Gray. Throwing it incomplete. Intended for Thorpe, who's become his favorite receiver, Willie Andrews, on the cover right with him. There's a ball that just really cut out of the hands of, of, of Gray because he had Thorpe open. <laughs> and you see the receiver standing down there about 18 yards, and all of a sudden he looks up over his head to see the ball sail by. You know it wasn't close. Tom Malone will kick it away for the first time. Jason Foster back to receive for Florida. Hangs it up. Foster angles over, takes it at the 28, has some trouble, goes out of bounds at the 26, and that's where Florida will begin their second series. And Jason Foster, the speedster, unable to do anything with that. A 45-yard punt. And we'll see if Florida can get their offense going when we come back. Welcome back to Orlando here at the Citrus Bowl as the Florida Tuskers come on the offense once again. And Brooks Bollinger, four for five in that first drive, which led to a missed field goal, flips it out as the completion. And making the catch was Paris Warren. He picks up a couple on that. Six-footer who played on that great undefeated team at uh, Utah under Urban Meyer a few years back. You want to know something? We're sitting here with the head of the officials. But I'll tell you what, six guys came that time. Two linebackers, one on each side came. There were six men on the blitz, which is illegal. Pickup of two, second and eight at the 28. And as Paul pointed out earlier, four down linemen, that is it. They have to show a blitz, and the blitz has to come from outside the tackle, if that be the case. And running straight up the middle is Michael Pittman. And there to bring him down, Nathan Williams, who has been active, the former star at Murray State, who was a Ohio Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year. But Pennick number 34 is is the fullback, and this guy is a sensational blocker. Remember, he blocked uh, in California, the place in San Diego. You remember the guy that ran that uh, Ladanian Tomlinson? <laughs> I think had to buy him some steak dinners after uh, that great season, didn't he? A couple of watches on third and three. Pressure is on. Bollinger is down, and Bollinger brought down by Simeon Rice who picks up his first sack in the UFL. The first guy ever to get 100 sacks. So watch Simeon Rice. He just comes around Petiti, number 78, the de offensive tackle. Petiti never had a chance. If he gets started, Simeon Rice gets started, you better put another guy out there to help. 
Tom Sauerbrunn will kick it away. The former Pro Bowl kicker. Sends it high, moving up, making the catch at the 35, and going right down on the spot is Grafonzo Thorpe. 40 yards on the punt, three on the return. Shad Williams there to make the tackle on the special teams. Appropriately, he is the special teams captain. And another look at Simeon Rice. Maybe he's getting that big chip off his shoulder now <laughs> with that his first UFL sack to go with the 100 plus that he put together in the NFL. I'll tell you, when I saw him yesterday, I thought the guy weighed about 240. I really did. He said he's 265. With the carry is LeBrandon Tofield and uh, picks up four to bring up a second and six. Ted Cottrell was telling us when we asked him yesterday, Paul, about how did Tofield, the former LSU star who spent some time with the Jaguars, how did he come into the system? He said, some of the guys here, the coaching staff said, you got to get this guy. You got to take a look at him. I did, and I really liked him. It was pretty much that simple. There's a lot of friends calling friends and saying, you know what? Come on down here and play. Or go out to, out to Phoenix and play with the two teams out on the West Coast. And again, it's Tofield going to work, and Odell Thurman brings him down after a five-yard game. Just over three minutes to go here in the first quarter. If I were if I were going to run, seriously, just take a look. A little toss into the outside. Look at the defensive linemen. The defensive linemen are all knocked back into the inside. So all you really have outside are is a middle linebacker and an outside linebacker. So if you can get by either one of those guys, you've got some pretty good running distance. Why run up the middle where the defensive linemen have to stay anyway? Tofield doing all the work on this series. It is third and one. Just side of the 45. Gray flips it over the middle as the completion and the first down. Nice little pitch right over the middle. And they're still going and still going. And will finally stop at the 40-yard line. A 15-yard pickup on the simple little pass over the middle. And some great running done there by Ronnie Gent, the tight end. Well, Ronnie Gent, look what happens here. They're trying to strip the ball out. Ronnie Gent is tackled about the 45-yard line. Look where he ends up. Five yards down the field. They're diving under, trying to rip the ball out. He holds the ball and picks up another five yards. Jet, who uh, had a great career at the University of Louisville, fourth round pick of the Eagles, played some with them, some on their practice squad, some with the Saints and the Bengals. And now unloading great deep, and it's broken up. Nice defensive play by Dexter Jackson. Boy, I tell you what, this is truly uh, looking at a weak safety getting over in coverage. Now, Dexter Jackson is in the middle of the field. Now, watch, you're going to see Leggett going downfield, and he's wide open. And just at that time, Dexter Jackson shows up. He timed this thing perfectly, read it well, and got into the play. Jackson, the former Super Bowl MVP. You look at the stats right now on Quinn Gray. Second and 10 at the 40. And once again, they'll keep it on the ground and pick up yards and then some. And that is Charles Ali. His biggest run of the night, 22 he gains. See, I told you run the ball wide and then sometimes up the middle. <laughs> Watch it. The blocking up front is just sensational. Harvey, Bennett, and Metter, the three guys in the middle, the center and the two guards did an excellent job. Takes it down to the 18, first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground, not much there this time. Sap, big fullback out of Colorado State, played with the Broncos, was with the Texans briefly, gets his first carry of the night and picks up a yard to make it second and nine at the 17. Now we got two tight ends in the ball game, and just don't be surprised if there's a little play action to throw off of this. Second and nine, Tofield the setback. 
Gray looking, popping, throwing for the end zone and overthrows Sanders. And right there with Sanders on the coverage was Darius Vanette. Sanders is one of the guys, this is basically timing. And what happens is that Gray is throwing the ball to the corner of the end zone. And what happened on that play is Sanders stopped. He was going to the corner, then slowed down. Had he, had he kept his pace, he might have had a chance to catch that ball. Third and nine at the 17, 17 seconds to go first quarter. New York on this, their third offensive series. Gray will keep this on the ground. They'll go straight up the middle and come up about a yard short of the first down. Ali carrying it. And he was brought down just shy of the first down. And that is the end of the first quarter. New York, seven. And Florida, nothing. And here in Orlando, we'll be back on this night where rain was threatening, but it's turned out to be a beautiful evening. And so far, it is an evening that New York is very much enjoying against the home team, Tuskers. Right now. Welcome back to the Citrus Bowl, head coach Ted Cottrell. Usually the defense is ahead of the offense early in the season, but your offense looks to be in sync so far. Yeah, they're doing a really good job. You know, Quinn is uh, mixing it up to run the pass. We're able to get the guys up in the side, running the ball, and that opens up our play-action pass, and we're able to hit a couple play-action passes on them. Fourth and one, you going for it? We'll see. <laughs> but I think here you, you can expect us, we're going to try to uh, try to get them off size, and if they don't, uh, they don't fall for that, we'll kick the field goal. Very good. Thank you, Coach. Uh -huh. Kenny Paul, back up to you. All right, Ron, let's see if it works as the Sentinels break huddle to start this second quarter. Fourth and one at the 10. If I were the quarterback, he's one of these times, well, I like to fake the coach out and go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's got Sapp at fullback. Once you get back going for you, like the third or fourth hut, it's over. They're not coming. No penalties in that first quarter, and are we going to have one to start the second quarter? Flag is thrown for the first time in the game. You know, it is, it's just crazy. You, you take a time, there's a timeout because the quarter ends. You're on the sidelines, and you're saying to your, to your offensive lineman, okay, sit there, just sit there. We're going to try to get them offside. And if we get them offside, we have a first down and we continue. So just sit there. We're not going to snap the ball. And I repeat, sit there. <laughs> and we wait and they wait and they wait and watch what happens. Look at the defensive lineman or offensive lineman. The guy moves. Just to move on the left side of the line. <laughs> and there's five yards. And so from the 14, fourth down and six, and they will go for the field goal attempt. Kenny, first flag of the game. There was there were no flags in the first quarter. Hitter check, a 32-yard attempt. Out of the hold of the punter Malone, the kick is up, and it is good. And it's now 10 to nothing in favor of New York. So the Sentinels continue to be the only ones lighting up the board. The Tuskers will try again inside the Citrus Bowl where Florida is down by 10 in the second quarter. Coach Jim Hazlitt. Jim, what are you going to tell your team to make the change this game around? Well, you know, they're doing a good job on the other side of the ball, mixing it up on us to run in a quick game, and uh, we got to do a better job tackling on defense. And then offense, we just got to be consistent. We do a good job moving the ball, then we, we get stalemate, we give up a sack, but uh, we'll be okay. You know, we just got to keep fighting through it. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Natalie. Willie Andrews back to receive the kick, moves up, takes it at the 11. Across the 20, hit spins around, still on his feet, 25, up to the 30, and that's where Florida will start after that 20-yard return by Willie Andrews, who two years ago to this day had his first NFL touchdown, a kickoff return when he was on special teams for the Patriots against the Dolphins. Well, it, it shows you that this guy's got determination. He's a pretty good runner. Now, watch, he gets under the ball. In, in the first initial hit, he does not go down. That's balance, folks. 
And you're hoping, you were hoping he's going to run for another touchdown. Wouldn't it be so good, the foreshadowing, if nothing else? On first and 10 at the 30. Tatum Bell, the setback. And he gets across the 30 about a yard on the play. And bring him down, Maurice Fountain. Who played arena football a couple of years ago. He was uh, on the all-rookie team after coming out of Clemson. Second nine at the 31. Receivers everywhere for Bollinger. Has some time, floats it out and over the head intended for Michael Pittman. Well, that time they had Ryan Wallace, number 54, who was a linebacker, up on the line of scrimmage, and he kind of delayed on the blitz. But he he never does, does get there. They read it because they show it. But here's the throw on the outside. There was no chance to get that ball to Pittman. Darian Williams... Almost step for step with him. Williams and Pratt in the secondary for New York. They're the two guys that made the starting lineup after walking on at a tryout camp. And suddenly, Coach Petrell said they look pretty good. Here it is, third and nine. Florida is two for four on third and long situations. Bollinger keeping it himself, and he is going to come up short of the first down. You know, it is kind of funny, though. You talk about Paul Pratt and, and Darian Williams. Uh, 41 and 37. These guys, they come to a tryout camp. There's 1,080 guys that are there. Teddy Cottrell takes a look at these two guys and says, you know what, hey, they're better than anything I've got so far. <laughs> so why don't I just pick them up and put, <clears throat> excuse me, put them on my team. I don't need to put them on a team, but they start. <laughs> Tom Sauerbrunn will kick away once again. And Grafonzo Thorpe stands back for New York. Sauburn hangs it up a little short, take on the run, has trouble with it, is Thorpe, but he stays with it. And moving right in for the Florida Tuskers was Michael Grant on the play. 37 yards on the punt, no return. And so everything going pretty well for New York right now, except maybe that bobble a little bit. They still have possession and they have the lead. New York begins this series, first and 10 at their own 25. Quinn Gray back to pass, looks, flips it out, coming out of the backfield is Tofield. Tofield first down, more up close to the 40, around the 39, and moving in to make the tackle, Kim, uh, Tim McCargle, a 14-yard pickup. First screen of the game, and it was set up perfectly. They waited over a quarter to throw it. Boy, does Gray set this up perfectly and look at they get the, the lineman back to the outside that's better number 60 and then Tofield picks up the first down that was just a clean play gray four for nine 94 yards and it's first and ten at the 39 fakes fires over the middle and off the hands of Thorpe and there and then not there and Thorpe knows it but Gray continues to encourage him, and that's what all the players were talking about yesterday, that Quinn Gray has come in and shown leadership immediately. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you throw the ball, you do all the things right, and here comes Thorpe. He's coming across the middle. Look where this ball is put, right on his hands. He puts the ball there, and Thorpe misses it. But, you know, and, and I like what Gray did. There's like, don't get mad. Things like this happen. Just get even. <laughs> you know, go back to him. He was wide open. They had three people down there trying to cover him, but Thorpe was clear. Thorpe's made two big plays, including hauling in the touchdown. Second and 10 at the 39. On a reverse, looking for some room is Barkley. And he is forced out of bounds. A gang getting over there. McCarrigo getting in there first along with Dexter, Dexter Jackson to help out as Chris Barclay picks up a couple of yards out to the 41. Well, the right corner, which is Fakir Brown, he's the guy that really makes, makes uh, Barclay run to the outside. He forces it back to the inside. He's just coming up to make the tackle, and he, he doesn't make the tackle, but he forces the runner back to the outside and allowed the linebackers to get there. 
Talked about the leadership of Quinn Gray. Ted Cottrell said to us yesterday, Paul, there was a situation. It was a little tense. We were having a sloppy practice, and Gray called everybody together. He said, I just sat back and watched to see how Gray would react. And he came through like the leader. Whistle as the ball is snapped on third and eight. And our second flag of the night. Time out. New York. Wait a minute. He just pointed to uh, Florida. He pointed Florida. This is a 30 second timeout. No flag on the play. That's been waved off. A timeout instead. But as Cottrell said, he wanted to just step back and see the leadership of Gray. And he said, Gray never said anything about any of his teammates. He said, it's all on me. We're not playing well, and I'm the first one. I'm the guy that is not doing the job today. We, led by me, have to get a lot better. And he said, that's how he's become such a big fan of Quinn Gray, in addition to the obvious athletic ability. And all the guys fall around him. You know, it, it, it's very easy when you have a young team like they have, only in camp for three weeks, to start pointing fingers at people. But when you point your finger to yourself first, and it all starts with me, and I'm the one that's screwing up first, but so are the rest of you guys, so let's put it all together. It's kind of nice. Third and eight at the 41. New York two for four on third downs. Tyrone Gross comes into the lineup for the first time. Gray under pressure, tries to run away, will flip the ball forward. It is incomplete. And kicking it away now will be New York. And that shows the first time that we could talk about the grounding rule and the changes here in the UFL. Yeah, but look what happens. The linebacker blitzes up the middle, and he's not allowed to blitz up the middle. He has to blitz from the outside. That's McCargle. He is not allowed to blitz there. There should have been a flag on the play, and it wasn't thrown. So on fourth and eight, they will kick it away again. Malone under some rush, but gets off a nice high kick. Moving back and taking it, and is pounded as soon as he brings it in. Foster makes the catch, had nowhere to go. Moving in on a dead run was Trey Battle and makes the hit. <laughs> 10 nothing. New York leading Florida. The Tuskers seeing if they can get something on the board. 11-12 to go here in the first half as you look at the sideline and maybe just a little bit of concern right now from Jim Haslett and company as Brooks Bollinger Goes to work once more. Play action. Fires it coming out of the backfield. Making a nice grab of it is Andrew Pennick. In addition to blocking, he does that well. Hauling in passes. Picks up four. We go back to Quinn Gray, though, on that last series, on that third down. And one of the rules that's different in the UFL is in terms of grounding. The Florida, the quarterback can be in the grasp as long as he gets the ball back to at least the line of scrimmage or beyond. Then it is not intentional grounding. Exactly, and, and you know, the only, each team only has two quarterbacks, and usually the one that's starting is a lot better than the other one, and you don't want to lose any quarterback. Second and six, and they keep it on the ground, fumble, but holding on to it, it looks like Florida maintains possession. Hit hard was Tatum Bell, lost it, picked it up, a loss of four on it. Tatum Bell is hit. He drops the ball. He's sitting on his rear end. Watch, and they'll kick the ball right back to him. Here he goes. The ball's out. He's sitting down. Here comes the ball right back to him. He really didn't have to move. Terrell Mays giving chase, but uh, <laughs> you're right. He wasn't hit. He just dropped the ball. It went forward. Then they kicked it back to him. That was kind of neat. Third and ten. Another third and ten. They're two for five so far. Bollinger looks to the left, now back to the right, throwing in that direction, off the hands, and intercepted. It is picked off by Pratt. Pratt cutting inside the 20, in the 10, down to the 1. That is the guy who made the team trying out. Paul Pratt with the interception and almost the touchdown. 27 yards on the return. Boy, I'll tell you, Paul Pratt, I mean, this ball, first of all, should have been caught. That's number one by the offense. And, but number two is watching Pratt's eyes, his hands, and making the adjustment on the ball. 
Number 37 is Paul Pratt. Watch this. Goes up in the air, sees the ball, takes it at the high point, and then back towards the goal line, picking up blockers. That was just an excellent play by Pratt. Now you know why Teddy Cottrell just picked him up when he saw him working out. Pratt, we have seen him on special teams do well. We've seen him play some good defense. And now the former University of Nevada star who made it in tryouts has set his team up at the one-yard line. Sap in. And Sap is about that close. We're waiting for the official signal. Of course, Florida, say, or New York saying he's in. Let's check in with Ron on the sideline as we await the verdict here. Paul Pratt, huge interception for you. What did you see as that play evolved? Well, you know, I, like, I knew they liked to run them, those slants, posts. So I saw it coming. I saw it kind of overthrown. And some in me just, in a moment, just stopped and it got tipped. And I caught it and just took, you know, just made a play when I had to make a play. You made a play. Thanks, Paul. Kenny? All right, thanks, Ron. Second and goal. They will try again. And did Sapp get in as he reaches? No, he lost yard. And he is going to be about a yard back. Did you hear Pratt breathing? That's the way I am when I walk up three <laughs> stairs. <laughs> That's the way we are going to the buffet up here. <laughs> we went back to get his ham sandwich and came back breathing oh. like that. How oh. exciting that has to be for him, though. You know, just, I mean, just being activated for the team and also playing as a starter and then get an interception in your first game. And remember Ted Cottrell there? Yes, he said he had a Roberto Duran secondary. <laughs> Hands of stone. <laughs> they can't catch anything. Now he's saying, no mas. I've got a guy that can make a catch. And his name is Pratt. New York. New York takes a timeout on third and goal at about the one. It's been tough going in close range for Quinn Gray and company after they were set up in beautiful field position by Pratt's interception. You know, one of the other things, too, that you must you must understand, folks, that those these two teams live in the same hotel here in Florida. They practice each day with each other. They've had scrimmages that while there was one that ended in five fist fights. But, you know, come on, those are kids. Those are kids. Kids, kids are allowed to do that. So, you know, they pretty much know each other. They work out together each day. So, I mean, it, it, it's not unusual for them to know what the other team is doing. Let's go to Ron on the sideline. Kenny Moore on Paul Pratt. Just before that defensive series, he got his bell rung, and he was on the bench, and the equipment manager and the team trainer were taking a look at him. They looked at it. They, they made some adjustments to his helmet, and they sent him back out. I think that was a good call. They made the right adjustments. Equipment manager might be getting a star or something on that. Here we are. Third and goal at the one. Tofield, the lone setback. Pitch to him. Going around the right side. He's hit. Ball fumbled loose in the end zone. Did New York get it back? No, it goes to the Tuskers. Florida makes a stand. Cecil, or that is Vanette, that comes up with it. Darius Vanette. I mean, when you say, you know, a, like a quarterback going in, you can't take a, a, a sack. Well, here's the thing where you really have to have control of this football. You cannot allow this to happen. I know the hit was on the ball. The helmet hit the ball and the ball came out. Bennett gets the ball. But you've got to protect that football. You're down there. You've got three at least. Look at this. That ball's out. He just gets hit with a helmet into the ball. McCargo making the hit and knocking it loose. And Vanette picking up the toe field fumble for the touchback and now Florida will start first and 10 at their own 20 and did they dodge a big bullet and Bollinger comes right back and showing the confidence he has he goes to Chad Gessner the man who couldn't handle the pass a few moments ago that was intercepted by Pratt. Don't you like that though I mean uh, Gessner he, the ball went through his hands it was a, it was a, I'll give him a little bit of an excuse it went it was a little bit behind him but to come right back to the guy I mean that shows confidence in the receiver of course he's also one of your best receivers and it's 6-5 one of the tallest Second and two after that pickup of eight. Bollinger again. Up top, complete. First down out to the 40. 
and he's gone to Jason Foster. They really like this kid on so many levels, the former All-American from Georgia Southern. But that part first starts with the blocking up front. And then what Jason Foster does, he gets into that zone and sits down. You don't have to go running all over the place. As soon as you see an opening, sit down. The quarterback will find you. Pick up a 13 to the 41. Bollinger will keep it on the ground this time and slam down is Michael Pittman. And Pittman had nowhere to go as Darian Williams got there and there is a flag on the play. Illegal defense number 54, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, there is the 15 yarder for the blitz, or in this case, the no blitz rule, however you want to look at it. Well, you can blitz, let me clarify something. <clears throat> you can blitz up the middle if you're three yards off the line of scrimmage, but you can't, you, if you're gonna blitz, take a look at it. Now, look in the middle of the, of, of the field. Look, right Wallace, in here. 54. Right in the middle of the field, and you're gonna see that he's up near the line of scrimmage. See it right here, now watch. He goes inside, and that's an illegal blitz. Now, had he been back off the line three yards, he could have blitzed from there, anywhere on the field, up the middle, off the end. And back to action, Michael Pittman will carry for maybe one. Second penalty for New York, been penalized 20 yards as Harwell wraps him up and makes the play for New York. You know, the one thing about that call, too, Kent, is that that is a severe penalty. I it mean, is. just for the lineup. And that's, they want to stop this because all the defensive linemen, again, have to have their hands down. You have five offensive linemen. They can't, you know, they want to protect these quarterbacks as much as they possibly can. And it's a rule that will change next year in the United yes. Football League. It is just now because of the short time to get ready. Bollinger throwing. He's ready with that one. Hits Foster. Foster doing some leg work now. He's inside the 25. Foster picking up the first down and more. Wallace comes over to make the tackle. Here's the throw to Foster. Just we'll take a look at this. Perfect. Now watch. He'll stop. Go back to the inside. The nice part about this is that New York is going in to score. They're on the one-yard line. Florida takes the ball away. It just gives them all that momentum, and now they're inside the 25-yard line. 21 yards on that play. And it's first and 10 at the 23. Bollinger. Trying to stay in the air. Pressure rolls out, fires complete again to around the 20. And this one is Tay Biddle who hauls in his first reception. Williams there to make the stop. You know, we saw yesterday and we looked at and looked at the offense of Florida, and then we talked about it tonight about the offense of Florida and all the guys that they have. They have the running backs, Bell, Pittman, Williams, and you got Pennick, who's a fullback that can block, and then they have wide receivers that can fly. They had not done a thing. And there's like five minutes left to go in the second quarter, and now they're on the move. And the big defensive stop. Bollinger looking, throwing again, incomplete. And that is one of the few times that Bollinger looks like there's been some kind of miscue on the part of either receiver or quarterback. Well, Paris Warren was a receiver. That's another one of the receivers. Got some pretty good speed. Was out. He just sat down and <laughs> the ball. There was nobody there. Third and six at the 19. You see the numbers on Brooks tonight. Nice protection throwing. First down, Pittman taking it out of the backfield, gets to the 10. Michael Pittman and Battle makes the tackle. We know Pittman can run with the ball, but this young man has got excellent hands. And it's just, that was so easy. He comes out, the linebackers never covered him, and Pittman is wide open. Watch Pittman when he comes out of the backfield. He's to the right of the screen. He's going to come up. Look at, there is really nobody there. The linebackers never get a chance to get out to him. And that was Williams, Nathan Williams, number 51. He just not fast enough. Ball marked just inside the 10. First and goal. Play action. Bollinger firing over the middle. Touchdown, Murphy. 
Frank Murphy hauls it in. The man who was just activated this week gets the first touchdown in Tusker history. Boy, I t I'll tell you what, this was a wonderful fake. A play action pass that literally froze everyone. Take a look what Bollinger sees in the, in the end zone. Take a look, it's only Murphy. Just a great throw, nobody is close to him. That was Trey Battle, number 27, trying to cover. He wasn't even close. Bryant will attempt the point after. It is true. And Florida, after making a great goal line stand, recovering a fumble in the end zone, they come right back, march 80 yards, and get some points on the board at the 352 mark. Bollinger to Murphy, 10-7, New York still leads. Back in Orlando, Florida, the Citrus Bowl, where Florida just put up their first touchdown with quarterbacks Brooks Bollinger. Brooks, tell me about that last series. It was good. You know, we just uh, came out the first drive, had some momentum, shot ourselves in the foot, and then we kind of had trouble getting the momentum back. So uh, with that drive, the defense made a huge stop for us after the turnover, uh, and we responded and, and drove it down the field, and it felt good to get the, the first one in. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck the rest of the game. Kenny, back to you. Thanks, Natalie. Bollinger on that drive, four for five, 76 yards, capped off by the 10-yard touchdown pass to Frank Murphy. Vanette stands back, awaiting the kick. Takes it at the five. Cuts across to the 20, leans forward to about the 23. And moving up to make the first hit. Was Vanette making that tackle on Barkley? You know, there's a linebacker for Florida that you talked about in, when you and I were discussing about players on these teams that played other places, a guy by the name of Odell Thurman, number 52. We have not mentioned his name tonight. He's playing the left outside linebacker. This guy is, is to me, was one of the best linebackers that I'd, I'd seen coming out of college. First and 10 at the 24. They will keep it on the ground with Tofield and pick up maybe a couple of yards on the play. Yeah, Odell Thurman, as you know, when he was at Georgia and was one of the great players there, and he comes in in the second round to the Cincinnati Bengals. He's going to be their defensive star of the future and uh, was certainly one of the outstanding rookies four years ago and then ran into a lot of personal problems. You know, when, when you see a young, these young guys, and I have to say, you see young guys that are getting in trouble, I blame their agents and I blame their attorneys for, for turning these guys loose because most of these guys never had that kind of money, and all of a sudden they've got it. And they don't know what to do with it and, it, and they just don't know how to handle it. Second and six almost picked off, and it was. Brown makes the interception. Fakir Brown, the seven-year NFL starter, stepping in front of that pass and picking it off for Florida. Well, you see Fakir Brown on that play. Watch him look in the backfield. He already sees the ball coming. He's got the receiver beat, and, and that's Thorpe. He's got him beat, the defensive guy, to the inside. The pressure's on, but that ball came out, and this was all about Brown. And you look at Brown on the sideline, seven years as a starter in the NFL, four of those with Tim Haslett. Easy to figure out how he got on this team. And now Florida threatening again, first to 10 at the 35 of New York. Bollinger, see if he still has the hot hand. Good protection, he's throwing for it all. Touchdown! Wide open in the end zone, Tay Biddle. And just like that, the Tuskers are in front for the first time. I'll tell you, Bollinger had to be in shock because when he looked out in the middle of the field and he saw Biddle running down the middle of the field, number 15, there was absolutely nobody around him. You talk about a blown coverage. Look in the middle of the field. Look at Biddle. There he is. The defensive guys are not within seven or eight yards of this guy. What a call. And Bryant will come on. He was only on the sideline for a matter of moments, probably, and he will put it up and through. 
Two touchdown passes now for Bollinger on back-to-back -back drives. Florida had trouble getting anything going, and in less than two minutes on offense, they have taken a 14-10 lead. As Tay Biddle celebrates on the sideline. We talked earlier about him being a track All-American when he was at Ole Miss as one of their star receivers. I don't think he ever got that open on the track. I can assure you, look at it. He's running down the middle, and there's nobody there. Look at Biddle. He's looking back at the quarterback, and I can tell you, Bowling just said, wait a minute. All I see is that big blue jersey down the middle. What a nice throw, though. And Brooks Bollinger, yeah. Slap hands with all involved on the Tusker sideline. And Natalie's there with the man that... Uh, Natalie, you're closer to Tay Biddle than anyone else has been in the last few minutes. Well, Tay's over here laughing right now, but Tay grabbing that pass. Quick series there. You guys had to come right back out. So tell me about how you were able to get the momentum to get another one in. Well, I mean, you know, we came out slow, and we already know we keep fighting, keep fighting, things to turn around for us. So that's what we did. We came out and just kept playing ball, having fun. Glad to hear you're having fun. Thanks for your time. Getting back to you. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Barkley stands back and takes it at the 10, up to the 20, to the 25. And he's met and comes down around the 27-yard line. Colby Bockroach getting over to make the tackle. And Bollinger now in the last two series, Paul, he is 5 for 6, 111 yards and two touchdown passes. Isn't that amazing, though, how one play turns an entire offense around and the team around? I mean, New York is going in. They're up by 10. They could have made it 17 to nothing. And they fumble the ball in the end zone. Florida gets the ball, they go right down the field and score. First play from scrimmage, they intercept. First play on offense, they throw a touchdown. Let's see if Quinn Gray and company can respond to this. Tofield. Straight ahead for about four. McCargill moves in to make the tackle. McCargill is everywhere. <laughs> he caused a fumble earlier when he put the helmet into the bread basket of Tofield when they were down on the one. This is a very, very good middle linebacker. His number is 59. And he will stick you. So with that guy when he was the defensive rookie of the year with the Buffalo Bills. You look at his attitude, you know. I think Haslett still would. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he could still play. I wouldn't challenge him, I can tell you that. Second and six at the 33, and we are down to the two-minute warning. New York jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Florida roaring back to lead 14 to 10. Do the Sentinels have another response? Second and six at the 33 for New York. They have seen a 10-0 lead evaporate rather quickly on two great drives by the home team, Florida Tuskers. Gray, good protection, firing over the middle, complete. He put that one right on the numbers of number 12, Steve Sanders. 21 yards on that pass. And Sanders hauling it in right in front of Willie Andrews. They move into Florida territory, first and 10 at the 47. On the ground, Tofield. And he may have gotten that extra surge <laughs> helped by a lineman better to get the first down. The thing about it is they only have New York. They only have one timeout remaining in this first half. Uh, but that was a good play, a running play. Ten-yard pickup. They have plenty of time. They've got a minute and ten seconds. First and ten at the 37. Again to the air and complete. And a pickup of seven. And Ronnie Gent, once again, is right there to haul it in. A couple of receptions now for the tight end. And Odell Thurman, there we get to say his name, makes the tackle. Second and three at the 30. Gray, good protection again. Fires it incomplete into double coverage intended for Leggett. Andrews is there. Tribble almost makes and the Tribble. intercept. Tribble has the interception. I, you know, when Teddy Control said his guys have hands of steel, Jim's got a couple of guys with hands of steel. Watch this shot. Dribble should have had the ball. What? It's right in his hands. Ooh. 
and hello, may I unload oh. on you? And Andrew and, said, hey, Leggett, that's how I used to do it in the NFL in case you didn't see me play. And as long as he doesn't hit him in the head, that's okay. Third and three at the 30. 46 seconds to go here in the first half. New York's 10-0 lead gone away. Florida up 14-10. Gray calls the timeout, the final timeout, as he Hi, looked over and was trying to communicate with Chris Barkley to get him set. Didn't like the way things were, and so Florida, or rather New York, uses up their final timeout of the first half. That's the third and final timeout of the half for New York. You know, and, and, and these teams, as much time, they've only had three weeks together, but they do work a lot on the two-minute drill. It is so important in the, in the ball game. And, you know, that these guys, what happens is to get them set in the right spot. You got to remember now that there are a couple of these guys that just got here not too long ago, three or four days ago, and they're playing. I mean, you, you don't forget your football skills, but you don't really know the system that they're running right now. And, and there is some confusion on the field. You know what I really like is the hitting because they, they really didn't have the opportunity. They scrimmaged, but it was controlled scrimmages where they, you know, they didn't go out there and try to kill each other, but you know, there was limited hitting, but we're seeing some pretty good hitting tonight. Third and three at the 30. Sap is the lone setback. Quinn throwing, and Gray has the completion and the first down. A pickup of six as he hits Sanders. Clock taking down to 26 seconds. First and 10 at the 24. In the pocket and incomplete. Darius Vanette in on the defense. Nice job. I'm very impressed with Darius Vanette. I mean, he's he's playing corner and he's out there most of the time by himself. And when you, you know, in any league, when you can find a corner that can play man up, Man, you've got something because that frees your free safety and allows you to cover their, their strongest guy with, with two people. Second and 10 at the 24. There's 21 seconds to go in the first half. Sapp stays in the backfield with Quinn Gray. Gray throwing incomplete intended for Leggett. So third and 10 with 18 ticks to go on the clock here in the first half. And two things that happen. Obviously, you don't want to throw an interception. And number two, you do not want to take a sack. They're in a position right now to get a field goal, to get three more points on the board, to get them to 14, 13. Just don't make any stupid mistakes. If it's not there, throw it away. Go to your kicker. Third and 10. Sapp remains in the backfield. Gray under pressure and is able to unload. And you talked about don't get sacked. And coming in to put on the pressure there was Chewer. Just take a look at this. This is so smart by Quinn. He, he does get the ball to the outside, does not take the sack. And now they have a chance to kick a field goal. That's heads up by the quarterback. Peter Check will attempt a 42-yarder. It's up. It's good. And New York, after seeing 14 straight scored by Florida, gets back on the board. 14-13 with nine seconds to go in the first half. And a needed drive, needed points for New York, perhaps, after they were stunned in the last two drives by Florida. And it's just something to pick your team up going into the halftime. I mean, they again, they were up 10-0. They were just cruising. They're getting ready to score another touchdown. And then all of a sudden, you fumble the ball. They take Florida takes the ball the length of the field, scores. One play, you throw an interception. One play for Florida on offense, they get a touchdown. And now you're losing the football game. So this was a, an excellent drive to just get the three points on the board. Big play by Patrick Chawura, who 
got in and put the pressure on Gray and forced him to throw it away. And again, if you're just tuning in, you're not familiar with why wasn't that grounding. As long as you get it to the line of scrimmage or beyond, it isn't. Obviously, that will change next season in the UFL. Right now, they want to protect their quarterbacks. They've only had about three weeks together. And I can't believe, Paul, there might be some guys in the NFL when they start looking for backup quarterbacks going, you know, maybe we need to protect our quarterbacks, too. There's not a whole lot of good quarterbacks to go around out there. That's not a bad role, man. <laughs> That's what these guys are thinking. If the quarterbacks are watching, saying, you know what? Hey, I, like, I that. like that rule. I like that grounding rule. <laughs> Check will kick it off. Andrews is back. Wobbly kick, and he will let this go into the end zone. And so Florida will come out to their own 20 with nine seconds to go in the first half. And Brooks Bollinger is as hot as Gray was at the start of this game. Bollinger is near the end of the first half. This is the favorite play of the quarterback who's in the lead. The knee. The knee. <laughs> Let me take a knee, and let's go inside and talk about this. The one play in professional football that we can't advise you to try at home. No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very good football game. We thought it would be a, a, a very good defensive game, and it was in the first quarter. And then the offense has kind of opened up a little bit. New York jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Florida came back on back-to-back -to -back touchdown drive. Passes from Brooks Bollinger. And then New York gets a field goal. And the home team, Tuskers, lead 14-13 here at intermission. Let's go to Ron on the field. Head coach Ted Cottrell, you were really in control of this game before that fumble on the goal line. That resulted in a Florida touchdown. You come back, throw a pick, another Florida touchdown. Right. How key was it to get that field goal to change this momentum? Well, it was huge. It was huge. You know, we had to get some points on the board. And it was a shame what happened to us. And we were down there ready to go in and uh, get the touchdown. We fumble and they come back and they get a touchdown. So that's a 14-point swing right there. So, uh, But I was glad that we were able to get the control, uh, get some momentum and come back down and, and get that three points. That was huge for us. Coach, what do you tell your team at halftime? Well, you know, they're playing well. It's going to be, he's got a long way to go. Long way to go. They, have, they have a good quarterback. They got a good solid defense. So it's going to be a battle and it's a long way from over. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. All right, Ron. Okay, guys, back upstairs. All right, thanks, Ron. Ted seemed uh, really kind of reserved, didn't he? Well, he, he, he wouldn't have been if they didn't get that field goal. <laughs> I tell you that. But, you know, they, they kind of turned it around, and he's satisfied now that they're back into control of the football game. The Florida Tuskers and the New York Sentinels in their UFL opener, and it is a good one. Florida roaring back, trailing 10 0. They lead 14 to 13 here at halftime. This fall. At halftime, 14 13, Brooks Bollinger with two touchdown passes. And rallying Florida, once trailing 10-0 in this game. And again, going to the two turnovers made by New York. And capitalizing both times, the home team Tuskers. And you look at Quinn Gray, who started off like gangbusters tonight for New York. Driving his team down early, a couple of big passes that uh, led to touchdown, teaming up with Grafonzo Thorpe. And that was on their very first drive. And then Ted Cottrell's team getting nothing on the board until late in the first half with seconds to go when they got the field goal. Uh, and uh, that was about it. And the one thing you cannot do in the beginning of this half, and, and, you know, I always think that every situation and every series of downs is a crucial situation. But I, I, I think you cannot let Florida get back the momentum they had. They kind of took it away at the end of the half by getting the field goal. Now they've got to go down, stop them, get the ball back, and do something with it. Peter Check for New York will kick off to Willie Andrews. Andrews of Florida at his eight. To the 20, leans forward, and to the 24, and that's where Florida will start 
their our first offensive drive here in the second half. 16 yards on that return for Andrews. You know, you would just think with, with Florida, with the running backs that they have, Tatum Bell, Michael Pittman, Williams, and Pennock, that they would be able to create something running the football. That is a surprise. And we, to me, it is. And you got you know you got big tight ends. You got guys that can. That can but Wiggins is big enough to block on the outside. Bollinger handing it off to Tatum Bell. Shakes the tackle and leans forward for two. Darian Williams making the stop. It's a lot easier to run of Brokowski that. The center gets out of the way. If you're not going to block anybody, get out of the way. <laughs> if I do it on my own, let me do it. Second and eight at the 26. Bollinger looks to the right, now gets it out to Foster. Foster up to the 31. Fincher there to force him out. Now this shows you experience with Bollinger. This ball was supposed to be a quick screen to the outside. Okay, when he looked to the outside, Foster wasn't ready. He wasn't in a position, so he dropped. Watch him. He'll pull the ball down. Whoa. Now I'll get it back out. Foster gets himself in a position to get the ball. He's getting blocking downfield by the tight end and the other wide receivers, and they picked up but seven or eight yards on the play. But that was all done by the quarterback. Nice block there by number nine. You might have seen as well. Paris Warren. And on third and two from the 32, they pitch it back and keep it on the ground. And this is a first down for Michael Pittman. Pittman at midfield. Pittman moves into New York territory down to the 40. Williams finally brings him down after a 29-yard game. Well, let me tell you now. I said Murkowski, the, 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 the center, got in the way last play. Well, I'll tell you something. He gets an outstanding block on this run. Watch the center come out. You're going to see the center right there, number 62, make a block in the backfield. That allowed Pittman to get to the line of scrimmage. Then this is Michael Pittman. And at last, a big run turned in by one of the Tuskers running backs. Well, this is the one thing I think that they really talked about at halftime. We have got to run the ball. First and 10 at the 41 of New York. Number 11, top of your screen, Maxwell into the game. Throwing down the far sideline and well overthrown was Frank Murphy who hauled in the first touchdown tonight for Florida and he's complaining that there should have been some interference there. Well, you know, just because the guy grabs you by the shoulders and almost pulls you down. <laughs> and, you know, and I want to clear up something quickly well, as we talked about the grounding. Next year, grounding rule stays in effect in the UFL. It will be the blitz rule or the limited blitz rule that will be changed to the delight of all quarterbacks who will play in the UFL next year. On second and 10 to 41, Bollinger on a delay, and once again they'll keep it on the ground, and Tatum Bell rips off his best carry of the night before being brought down by Trey Battle. Picks up 12. Boy, you can just inter interchange these two backs. You got Pittman running, you got Bell running. Now watch the blocking up front. This all starts at the line of scrimmage, and also with a missed tackle by the linebacker, number 56, Mortensen. So, Bell can run. We know he can run. We know that Pittman can run. You know you got an excellent blocker in Pennock, number 34 in the backfield. Let him run. He had five carries for two yards total prior to that run. First and 10 at the 29. And again, they'll go with Bell. And Bell responds over on the right side and gets down to around the 22. Fincher is there to bring him down, a pickup of six. And there isn't an offensive lineman in any league, anywhere, that doesn't like to run the football. They love to run the football. Linemen, you know, pass blocking is a kind of an art and so much time it's tough. But run blocking, these guys can line up man on man and then just blow you off the line of scrimmage. Second down and three. A rhythm to the Florida running game. Bollinger now ready to go up top. Firing and incomplete, well over the head of Gessner, who was covered by Mays. You know, even though they're in a third and three and a half situation here, you take a look at, at Bollinger throwing this ball to the outside. Now watch what happened. Watch, watch where this ball is. That's guessing around the outside. It's way too high and also covered. 
Nobody was open on that play. They sent three receivers out. This is still, even though it's third, third and three and a half, inside the 25-yard line, this is still a running down. Bollinger throwing, has his first down. Nice little pitch and catch. And Bollinger puts it right on the numbers of Newfeld. Ryan Newfeld making his first grab. 6-4 tight end, played at UCLA. Came in as a seventh round draft pick of the Buffalo Bills. He played five years up with the Buffalo Bills. Had a nice little career with yeah, them. Yeah, he did. And there's some depth at tight end, too. We've seen Murphy, and Newfeld now comes in. Wiggins is in there, and Decker. They got a lot of guys they can go there. First and 10 at the 17. They'll keep it on the ground to Pittman, and he bangs for maybe a yard. That's the first time that, that, that I've seen Michael Pittman run to the line of scrimmage and stop and hesitate. When he runs, he usually can see the hole right now and make that quick, quick move. He's got great feet. And when you do that, you allow the defensive linemen, linebackers to, to get in your face. Simeon Rice was telling us yesterday that Michael Pittman, a former teammate, uh, they were all together on the Bucks, uh, called him up and said, what about this UFL? I hear you're going to play in it. I think I might want to play in it. And Simeon said, yes, come and play. I asked him, I said, well, now, what does that mean when you have to tackle him? He said, no problems. <laughs> and Pittman knows it. No problems. You decide you want to play and you want to go against me? Fine. That's right. Also fans after Williams being looked at. Darian Williams. And that's the walk-on strong safety that we were talking about that Teddy Cottrell is, is so excited about. Williams has made some nice plays tonight as the other walk-on who made the tryout, Paul Pratt, who had a big interception. One that looked like was going to blow the game wide open perhaps for New York when they were up 10-0 when he returned it all the way back to the one before it was fumbled in the end zone and then momentum just changed drastically in favor of Florida as they drove down to get their first score. Momentum would change again in this if you can, if, if, if New York can st and just hold them to a field goal. Second and nine at the 16. Let's check in with Natalie once more. You know, one of the things that Coach Hazlitt told his offense at halftime was that they need to adjust their offensive schemes, and apparently it's working. They said by adjusting the schemes, that would decrease the sacks and also slowing down the game so that Brooks would be able to have a little bit more time. And so far, it's paying off here in the second half. Jim Hazlitt looking on. Second and nine at the 16. Bell in the backfield. Bollinger in the pocket, over the middle, complete, and touchdown to Gessner. 16 yards to Chad Gessner. A little icing on the cake as he leaped into the end zone. <laughs> and it makes it 20 to 13. <laughs> One of those leaps, so do I want to leap? How far do I have to go? Now, Bollinger, this is on him, too. Watch this. He's, he's waiting for Gessner to get open. Now, watch this. He's going to wait. Now, should I leap? Uh, okay, I can leap. He's not very big. I'll leap. <laughs> <laughs> and Bryant will try to make it an eight-point lead. And he does. 21-13. Brooks Bollinger with three touchdown passes tonight. Things are looking good right now on the Florida sideline. Bollinger to Chad Gessner. 21-13, Huskers leaping into the lead again. Florida again, another touchdown to make it 21 here in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. I'm with Chaz Gessner, who got the touchdown. Chaz, you and Brooks seemed like you guys were looking for each other right from the beginning of the game finally get one under your belt. How did the play unfold? Uh, we've been looking for this look uh, in the red zone all week. We know they play a lot of quarters, which is uh, four across in the, in the red zone, and uh, we know we had an isolation on the middle backer, and it was just a matter of me not messing it up. <laughs> well, that you didn't. Scored another one for Florida. Getting back to you. Thanks, Natalie. Gessner has a ring 
In Super Bowl 38, he was on the Patriots team. He has a World Bowl championship with the Berlin Thunder. He told us yesterday, probably wants another another ring. This one from the inaugural season of the UFL is standing back to receive the punt, or the kick rather, as Barkley comes on the attack for New York, gets it out across the 25 to the 27. Thurman on the tackle after a 25 yard return. New York, you just got to remember one thing. You're only down by eight, and there's plenty of time in this football game. You did not run the ball extremely well in the first half, but you've got to establish some kind of run because there's just no way that Gray, Quinn Gray, is going to be able to sit back there and throw the ball all night long. Florida marching 76 yards and eight plays in their last possession with Bollinger hitting Gessner. On the ground, that's Tofield. And is the ball loose on the ground? And New York, did they give it up for the third time in this game? Yes. Florida has recovered the fumble. To me, this is lack of concentration. Tofield, this is second fumble. You take a look. This is the first play from scrimmage. Florida just went down to score a touchdown. Look at Tofield. You've got to hold on to the ball. Pay attention to what's happening. And they just pull the ball out. I mean. And Darian Scott, number 98, at the bottom of that pile, is able to come away with it. So three turnovers now for New York tonight. Florida has scored touchdowns on the previous turnovers. Well, and Ted Cottrell threw the blue flag out. They want to review this and doesn't believe it was a fumble. Hey, New York is challenging the play that the runner was down. Not the question of did the ball come loose, but when did it come loose? Was he down? All right. The ball is in Tofield's hand, and, and I'll tell you right now. Uh, boy, when you when you look at that, now <laughs> I mean, because you can't really see it from that angle. But when you look at that, here here's a guy that that's diving. He's on the ground, and then the ball comes out. But if they already made if they made the call on the field. It, it's got to be conclusive that, that he fumbled the football before he went down. Here he comes now, this toe field, and again. I mean, I, I, it, it's hard to tell where his knee was from that angle. And, and that's the angle that they're looking at as well up in the booths. Uh, right, you can see, you can see him inside. Yeah. He's down, and now the ball comes out. You know what? Yeah, it looks like he was down when the ball, and then the ball came out. That was a better angle, and it does look like his yeah, knee was does. on. It was on the ground. And this would be a huge play for New York. All right, here's Tofield now going in. He's number 22. He's inside. He's going down. He's on the ground, and then the ball comes out. Now, this is not a fumble. This is not a fumble. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa. After review, the play was confirmed. New York is charged with a timeout. It stands as called a fumble, and Florida comes back on offense, and they. You know what I didn't see, and that's my fault. I, I really didn't see it. That ball was out. It was on his hip but when he when he goes down. Take a look okay. at his left arm, right by his left arm. Now, well, here the ball's out now. See the ball on the ground? Here is the ball. It is on the ground right here, and he is not down yet. That is an excellent call by the officials. And bad eyesight by me. And a second fumble tonight for Tofield. Remember the two turnovers so far, they've led to scores for Florida. We'll see if it works this on the third, and that is Bell carrying, getting it down inside the 30. Nathan Williams makes the stop. More aggressive running here in the start of this second half for Florida. We've seen that from Bell and from Pittman. Well, I think, you know, the one thing, if they are moving the ball and they're, and they're taking time off that clock. 
Second and nine, they'll keep it on the ground. This is Bell getting a first down, getting inside the 20. 11 yards on that carry for Tatum Bell before Battle was able to bring him down. Boy, this just shows you the, the footwork of Tatum Bell. Now, this play was not designed to go where he goes. Watch, it's supposed to go right and up the middle. Bell turns around, he sees the blocking of his offensive line, and he cuts it back to the outside to his left. That's just an outstanding play. Battle was the guy that makes the tackle, but it was a little bit late. That was shades of old there for Tatum Bell. First and 10 at the 18. Again to Bell. Through the middle, inside the 10. Inside the five, down to the two. And look at Tatum, he wanted that touchdown. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, let's, let's give credit where the credit is really due. Look at Patini Davis. The offensive line, the blocking, look at the hole in the middle that, that Bell goes through. When Bell goes through the hole, there was only one hand on him. Here it comes. Look at the blocking in that offensive line. 16 yards before Mays brings him down at the two. First and goal. Well, they let Bell finish it off. It's Pittman carrying over on the left side. Gets maybe a yard. Fincher there to make the initial hit. Well, you know, we talked about it at halftime. I said the team that can run the football is going to win the second half of this football game. And, and that right now, Florida is controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the ball. And when you can, when you can throw, like Bollinger has it, when he can throw when he wants to throw, not when he has to throw, he owns the defense. Second goal at the two. They'll go right up the middle and get about a yard. And the fullback, Andrew Pennock, carrying. It was fun talking with Jim Haslett yesterday and just hearing his excitement about this. Uh, former coach of the year in the NFL, of course, with the Saints and how excited he was. You see Williams in the secondary being taken off the field. We'll try to get an update as soon as we can there. Third and goal at the one. Bollinger is going to throw wide open. Touchdown, Newfeld. The fourth touchdown pass tonight for Bollinger. And he hits Ryan Newfeld. He had two tight ends on that side. He had Wiggins, number 85, and Newfeld, number 89. They covered Wiggins in, in the middle of the end zone. Newfeld just slips out to the outside. There was nobody there. This is a play action pass. Everything that they were doing was running all the way down. Why not cover? Getting a little somber on the New York sideline as Bryant comes on for the extra point attempt. 28-13. Great running by Tatum Bell during that drive. And it was finished off by this nice fake by Brooks Bollinger and finding a wide open Ryan Newfeld. Florida, their biggest lead of the night. Welcome back to Orlando. Kenny Rice, Paul McGuire, Ron Crock, Natalie Taylor on the sideline. And it's a 28-13 lead, Florida over New York. Barkley awaiting the kick of Bryant for the Sentinels, trying to get something going for New York after Florida capitalized on yet another New York turnover. They've scored 21 points on three turnovers. Barkley with it across the 20. It gets out to just past the 25. And Andrews making the stop, and here's Quinn Gray. You know, about an hour ago, everything looked so good for New York, didn't it? It, it, it just looked like, you know, here, here goes New York. We, 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 we know that, that Florida is a good offensive football team. But look at the points off of turnovers. Three turnovers, 21 points. I mean, this is crazy. It was on the verge at one time, back in the second quarter, of being a 17-0 game when it was 10-0 New York. They were down at the goal line. They were stopped. They fumbled, and Gray is under pressure. He throws it, and uh, at that moment, you can see Vanetti was probably saying, turn around, guys. 
Odell Thurman was one of the linebackers there, and the ball was much closer to them than any New York receiver. Well, that's Darren Scott, number 98, is, is putting the rush on. Now watch this. Here's a shot. Here's the hit. That's a clean hit. And Gray did the right thing. Well, he's going to get hit anyway. Second 10 at the 26. Ty Gross comes in the backfield for the first time tonight. Number 21. Gray pumping, throwing, and a juggling catch. Nice catch made by Gent, who goes like a hurdler, getting the first down and maybe a couple more yards. Right into linebacker Tim McCargill. 12 yards on the play. Don't you just love it, Gent? <laughs> First of all, look at the throw, is back to the outside. Watch this catch. Total concentration, gets away from the tackler, then here's the jump. He knows he's got to pick up another yard for a first down, and he does it. And to the chagrin of McCargle, who got some <laughs> knee in the face mask on that play by Ronnie Gent. Gray, two for eight. In the last couple of series. That was a needed completion. First to 10 out to the 37. They'll keep it on the ground, and this is Tyrone Gross. Gross was with the San Diego Chargers for a couple of seasons, 06, 07, some on special teams, taxi squad, 5'7", 218-pounder out of Eastern Oregon. And there you look at Odell Thurman, Paul. We talked about him back in the first half. I just think that this guy can do it all. I, you know, here's a guy that that is, is just such a, to me, a great football player. When he came out, he, he, he was, and then, again, personal problems. But this guy can play now. Second and eight at the 39. Play action, Ooh. and he goes right down. Gray had nowhere to go. Josh Cooper saying, yes, that is me, number 97. Putting him down, the 6'3", 265-pound end out of Ole Miss originally played with the 49ers and the Saints, a loss of eight. Watch this, Quinn Gray, he does not see him coming from the backside. This is the one place that the blind side for the quarterback. It wasn't a great hit, but it was enough to bring him down. You know, when you see Josh Cooper taking a run, watch this, a run. Boom, boom. Clean tackle, great play. That's Oren Thompson limping to the sideline. Darian Williams out of the secondary of New York was looked at earlier. He is yet to return to action. Third and 15 at the 32. Gray has felt the heat in this drive. He'll go on the ground. And Barkley will get some of the yards back, but well short of the first down. He gets 11. It's going to be fourth down, and they'll have to kick it away. You say, yeah, hey, that's a great play. They picked up about 13 yards on the play. Why don't they do that more? Well, because the defense is sitting there in pass defense and waiting for you to throw the ball, they're going to give you the 12 yards. But you're not going to get the first down. Foster back to receive the punt. Tom Malone will kick it away. Foster steps up. He's to the 20, the 25, and gets to the 28. So Florida back on the attack. They are leading at 28-13, 324 to go in the third. Back here in Florida, Brooks Bollinger brings Florida on the attack again. Throwing out, complete to Foster. Foster up to the 35. 
You know, how many times do you hear it in a ball game, and especially when the heat is there about the defense spending most of the time on the field? Well, this New York defense has been on this field a long time. And then when you throw a little little hitch pass to the outside to a guy like Foster, who's 5'7", 175 pounds, and can fly, he's driving that defense crazy. You can see these guys on, on New York's defense. They all have their hands on their hips. These guys are tired. Bollinger brings him back to the line, even though they have been training here for the last three and a half weeks in Florida. It's not been as hot as these last few days. Strings of 90 degrees, 94 today, and very humid. They'll go straight up the middle with Pittman. Let's go down to Ron now for an update on the injury situation, Ron. Thanks, Kenny. Quick update on safety, Darian Williams. He was taken off the field on a cart. He was suffering from body cramps. Took him into the locker room. They're going to hydrate him, and his return at this point is questionable. They're also working on uh, offensive lineman Thompson's uh, lower leg right now, but he's up and walking around. I'll keep you posted on that. Kenny, Paul. Thanks, Ron. Third and one. They'll go straight up the middle the old-fashioned way and pick up the first down. Pennick doing the work. You know, I, and you just can't say it enough. I mean, we got here today, and it is really hot out. It's, it was in the 90s today. And you look at these guys down in the field, there's a lot of weight in the middle of that defensive line. And the linebackers, I mean, they're, they're interchanging them as fast as they can. But these guys, even though they work out down here, they don't, you know, they don't work out that long and they've only been here for three weeks and as they bring it up on first and ten at the 41 all the players were talking yesterday but it hasn't even been close to this hot as we've seen this week with all these 90 degree humid days as they'll go right up the middle for Bell and Tatum Bell picks up four before Nathan Williams stops it I just like the fact that, the, that Florida has the two backs Bell and Pittman I mean it's just what what a great change of pace and there's not that much difference between the two of them. I mean, as far as their footwork and speed. Now, Pittman may weigh about 15 pounds more, but they still run basically the same. On second and six, Bollinger over the middle, complete. First down, Paris Warren. And Warren to the 43. As Bonner, Brian Bonner, makes the stop. They get 11 and move the chains again. Well, you know, in, what, what, what's going to happen here is you're going to see, again, four, the four deep down linemen, the four linemen have to put their hand on the ground. You're going to see linebackers starting to cheat because they have to to help these guys. We're getting at the end of the third quarter. But in order for, for, for New York to get in that backfield, they're going to have to do some, <laughs> I hate to say it, they're going to have to do some cheat. That is the end of the third quarter. Florida, 28. Does New York have a big rally in the final 15 minutes? Stay with us. Florida Tusker fans happy right now, and they've got the running game going. They keep the pressure on Gray. Bollinger has been hot. He has thrown a total of four touchdowns, including that one to a leaping Chad Gessner to finish it off. And yeah, all smiles for the guys in the teal and white. And back to live action and Bollinger. Good protection, firing, and again, he has a man wide open. That is Marcus Maxwell. Maxwell takes it inside the 20, inside the 15. Somebody fell down, and I think it was Pratt. He just falls down. And then Maxwell is wide open. And Bollinger just showing his experience. Now watch. Number 37 is Pratt. He gets tripped up. He falls down. Maxwell has no problem with the catch. And then makes a nice run afterwards. 29 yards on the play. First and 10 at the 14. And Paul, like you talked about at halftime, in the first half, 25 yards total in the rushing game for Florida, 114 in the second half, opening up even more for Bollinger to throw. Yeah, and it makes it so easy. And there's a guy that's done a lot of the work on the ground, Tatum Bell here in the second half. He picks up four more. I mean, there aren't, there aren't many, many 
teams in the National Football League that has two running backs. <laughs> We're looking at Florida with two running, two excellent running backs. There really aren't. That's true. With Bell and Pittman, and then a great blocker in Pennock. We haven't even seen Chad Williams yet. See him do anything, which he can. Second and six at the ten. Pitches it back. They'll stay on the ground. Here's Tatum Bell. Cuts inside the five. Slides close to the goal line. He picks up nine, takes it down to the one. Battle tripping him up. This is a great play. The right guard pulls left, which pulls the linebacker off of this side. When Tatum Bell gets the toss to the outside, take a look at it. There really wasn't anybody there. He almost had a chance to walk in. He outran his blockers, the offensive line. All the scores have come on passes tonight from Brooke Pollinger. First and goal at the one. Do they give it to Bell and let him finish it off? Take a look. You, you see going to the right is, is the guard. That's P.J. Alexander. He goes, the, he goes the, the other way. And then you see the two line, the, the center Florida. and the guard out in first front. Out of the half. It's easy. Florida knocking on the door again, leading 28-13. They have it first and goal at the one. First and goal at the one yard line for Florida. Tatum Bell's done a lot of heavy lifting, but he's sitting on the bench right now. Back to action right up the middle and nothing doing there. So a stop made by the Sentinels, one they needed as Tatum Bell set out that play and it was Michael Pittman doing the carrying. Bell with 66 yards here in the second half. That after only three in the first half. And he's back in the ball game, Tatum Bell. And do you want to know who's going to get the ball? I'm going to take a stab on number 25. Great guess. What about that for football <laughs> 101? Second and goal at the one. Bell. Oh. Second effort, touchdown. A determined Tatum Bell hit behind the line of scrimmage, wanted his six points, and he gets it. You know, that's one of the things I really love about running backs who have continuous effort. You know, uh, you, you say second effort, most people do, but I always think about it, it's, it, it's not second effort because if, if it is, then he quit on the first effort. But this is a, to me, it's a continuous effort by this guy. They brought him off the bench, and he, I mean, he was mad because he wasn't in the last play. He gets the ball. Why wouldn't you give it to him? You know he's going to score. Bell was 70 yards rushing, and now the TD, and here comes Bryant once more. And the kick is there. Florida, 35-13. Brooks Bollinger and company in control. Tatum Bell doing the heavy lifting, and he gets rewarded with the touchdown. Up. 35-13, Florida total command over New York. The last scoring drive, 10 plays, 71 yards. Tatum Bell doing a great job throughout and finishes it off with a one-yard touchdown run. And now Bryant will kick away. And standing back to receive is Steve Sanders, the wide receiver. It's been a long time since New York has made a threat on offense. Oh. This one comes up short at the 25 to the 30, and going down the sideline is Sapp. Cecil Sapp, the short man there, the fullback, turns it into a 21-yard return. That's when one of the more exciting things here for the Florida off for the New York offense in the second half, Paul. Well, it's Cecil Sapp. You know, he knows what to do with the ball. He isn't used to returning balls, but when he gets it, he knows. You know, but they did not put him on the ground. Cecil may say, I've been sitting over here looking across the way and seeing how Bell's doing and uh, seeing how Pittman's doing. Put me in. Give me the ball. Time of possession sometimes can be exaggerated. This time it kind of adds up. New York uh, not doing much when they have the ball. Some three and outs, some turnovers. Barkley carries for two. 
You know, the thing about it is that the, that the Florida defensive line and, and New York has been trying to run the ball up the middle against this football team. They're not extremely big. You know, they're not, they don't have the big 320 pounders, the guys in the middle of the nose tackles that you like to have. The guys are kind of like Savage is 276, Boykin is 289. Rotten is 295, and Scott is 289. So you're looking at guys that are under 300 pounds. They're still doing the job up the middle. Now, there is a play where New York picked up a first down, and they did run up the middle. Barkley picking up nine on the carry. Now, look at this. There, there is an excellent hole straight up the middle. And Barkley, look at, I mean, you give the guy a hole, he they can run. Pass was to Sanders, just out of reach. As you look at Jim Haslett, who uh, told us with, uh, without hesitation, we talked about it earlier, when we asked him about how much of the defense did you put in at once, he threw the whole kit, everything, the whole kit and caboodle at him and said, learn it. And he told us yesterday he thought about Thursday of this week, two days before <laughs> kickoff, they might have picked it up. <laughs> On second and ten at the 48. Throw and a catch, and it's Thorpe, who we haven't heard from since early in the game when he made a big catch and then later on hauled in a touchdown. And Brown is there to make the stop after an eight-yard pass completion to bring up third and two. And every situation now for New York is four-down territory. It's third down and two, and I can assure you that they're going on fourth down. First down. Don't have to. Leggett makes the catch. DeWan Tribble there to bring him down. And see, that's the only thing that Florida's going to give him now. They're going to give him the short six-yard pattern, the five-yard pattern, and, you know, they run the clock out. So if, if that's all they're going to give you, go ahead and take it. Don't get greedy. Gray over the middle and just out of reach of Sanders. I'm going to tell you one thing, Sanders ducked at the right time. And I'm, I, I got, there was a whole lot of guys playing football now that would have ducked. <laughs> had he stood straight up, they had to have been carrying him over here to this side. Hasley, yesterday, in addition to talking about football, talked about his son Chase uh, going to high school in Missouri. He's a heck of an athlete as a pitcher in baseball and a quarterback in football. 90 mile an hour fastball. He might be playing in the pros like his old man, just a different sport. Second and ten. Thorpe makes the catch and is immediately hit by Fakir Brown, who had an interception earlier in this game that set up a touchdown, the second one of the night for Florida. Third and six. And if they're going to give you the three-yard pattern, go ahead and take it. Gray steps up, tucks it, now he's running. And Gray gets the first down, down to the 21. He picks up 10 with his feet. Don't you like it? I mean, you, you see a guy, Gray, that guys have been dropping balls and, he's, and they haven't been able to run the ball. He's only been able to pick up short passes. And here it is, third down. Hey, go for it. This guy, I mean, this guy's got great feet. Under nine minutes to go, Gray. Handoff, Barkley gets inside the 20, is pushed back. And Carter, number 23, coming up. Jerome Carter from the secondary to make the hit. I mean, you could tell these guys are tired. Here, here's a team that's down by 22 points, and they're coming to eight and a half minutes to play. And you see these guys walking back to the huddle. And normally you would see the guys kind of hurrying up. Let's get things moving. I mean, they're tired. It is hot. And if the heat doesn't get you tonight, the humidity will. On second and nine, Gray steps out, makes the completion. Hitting Leggett. Picks up six. Tribble making the stop. You can be as critical as you want when you look into things. Now here's the thing with Leggett. He threw him a little short pattern and he picked up about five yards. What he should have done is get out of bounds. He wasn't going anywhere else. There were too many 
Is it teal? Teal shirts? Teal shirts. They tell me. Natalie you. Taylor gave us that, the teal. Incomplete on the slam. We refer to her for all of our fashion questions. And it's fourth down and three. What you want you want to see the great short arm of all time? Watch this. Watch his hands. Ooh, no. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not catching that. One. I'm just no. Like, no. No. <laughs> no. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, fourth and three at the 14 of Florida. This is the closest New York's been in a long time. Great throwing incomplete. Intended for Gent, who's made a couple of nice catches tonight. Not that time, and Florida will take over in total control. Florida Tuskers in complete control of this one, 35 to 13. And guys, head coach Ted Cottrell just gathered his entire defense over, called them over, and basically lit them up. And I won't go into details, it was a little colorful, but very vocal sideline right now, including defensive tackle Dan Davis, who said, enough of this, check your ego at the door. Let's see how that uh, New York defense responds. Kenny? Ron, what was hotter, the pep talk or the weather? Well, I have to say this breeze is heavenly. It was, uh, I would say it was, it was about even. All right, thanks, Ron. Here's Brooks Bollinger. Uh, no, now it's Chris Greeson comes in at quarterback for the first time tonight. Bollinger taking off the rest of the evening after a spectacular effort. Uh, team trailing 10-0, he comes back with four touchdown passes. So Coach Haslett and company now have a chance to take a look at some other guys here in the late going of this game, including Chris Greeson right here out of Northwest Missouri State. He led them to a Division II title as a all-American was a seventh round draft choice 10 years ago of the Cardinals. Played about five years in the AFL, the Arena Football League. Yeah, played a little in uh, Europe. Arena Football League, he threw like 117 touchdowns in a single season. This is Shad Williams getting the carry and ripping off a nice gain. <laughs> I told you, you saw Tatum Bell and Michael Pittman. You had those two guys and the guy, Sean Williams, we hadn't seen yet. Well, you just saw him. But what's happening is you got all the backup offensive linemen are in, and you got backup defensive linemen are in. And if Teddy Cottrell just gave his defensive pep talk, he is not going to like this play at all. Better come up with a new pep talk. Whoa. 16 yards on the carry. First and 10 up to the 32. Now you see Williams, uh, the special teams captain. He's going to make a couple of nice plays on special teams tonight. They'll keep it on the ground, and Williams will keep churning the legs and pick up some nice yardage going over on the right side. He gets four. And you just have to wonder if the... No, you were just going to say that, and you said it, it's, it's positive for, for Florida. Now you can play guys that you did, wouldn't normally play in the ball game. It just, you know, they practice hard. They deserve to be playing. And you wonder in Las Vegas, as they look on, some think those are the two teams that uh, might finish up in the championship. We had that speculation going already in both camps, and here we are in the, barely through the first week of the season. Little slant and a completion. Murphy hauls it in. Frank Murphy, who made a touchdown catch earlier. And you might ask yourself, what is a Florida Tusker? And what is that? In typical Marlon Perkins fashion, <laughs> we spared no expense in tracking it down. And that, my friend, is a member of the Warthog family. As they say here in the great Sunshine State, that is our Tusker. And, and that a, led to the nickname. That is a beautiful animal. You know. it, 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 uh, it, it is if uh, you're at a distance. And not close, I would imagine. And that is Shad Williams tripped up, kept his balance, and makes another nice pickup of 12 yards. A couple more runs like that from Shad Williams, and he'll be the leading rusher in this game. <laughs> he'll be close, won't he? Williams has already picked up 18 yards. And now 20 is up to 29 yards for Williams in this game. 
all in this drive. This well, has been the Shad Williams drive. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you, uh, Teddy Cottrell, you know, a lot of coaches, when you when you play a bad game and you're mistackling things, I guess, you know what, uh, first game, okay, we, we, we were a little sloppy. And they don't show you the game. They're going to show them this game. And, they, and, and, and I, if I were the guys, I might miss that practice where, they, where they're going to show the film, which would probably be early tomorrow or late Time tonight. Out. Florida, it's their second timeout in the half. Timeout for Florida, under four minutes to go in the game. Can Shad Williams pick up some more yards? That's a big question. Florida in control. Manhouse.com. Florida on their way to make it a successful opener in the United Football League, leading 35-13 over the New York Sentinels with 3.56 to play here in the fourth quarter. And Florida on the attack, Shaud Williams coming in. As Bell and Pittman getting a breather, Bollinger is out at quarterback, and Chris Greason is in. And a chance to get some rest and see what all happens here with this uh, Florida team. Get some of the other guys in, like Williams, who carries it once again. Bonner comes up to make the tackle. And a couple of yards on that for Williams. You know, we don't, you, when, you're, when you're watching a game, you're doing a game, you, you, you really don't say enough about the officials. I mean, these are, these are officials here. These guys are experienced. But this is a new league. They don't know most of these guys that are out here. And you think they really had control of this football game. Just think about it. There was not one flag that's good coaching also, but there was not one flag in the first quarter. These guys have controlled this football game extremely well. Penning back in at fullback. Williams will get the carry. And Williams pins in to his own man. That is big Charles Spencer. 6'4", 340 pounds of him. And he picks up seven. Well, Williams hits Spencer and Spencer turns his leg around. <laughs> He's got a I don't, at I don't think he can be avoided. Spencer well, is so big. Sean Williams is only 5'7", okay? Spencer's 6'4", 338 pounds. <laughs> and when you run in your own man, you're going, you're going that guy, you're going down. Third and one at the 31. Play action. Look out. Grayson from behind. Spencer giving him some protection. It's deflected, batted into the air, and falls harmlessly to the ground. Brian Robinson getting in there to uh, get his big paw on it for New York. Grayson, you better get that clock in your head moving a little bit faster because you you almost got hammered. You might not think uh, Charles Spencer, yeah. too. You got the backup guys that are in there playing offensive line. You don't have that much time to be standing there fooling around. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Why not? Fourth and one. 2.19 to go in the game. And who else but Williams, who gets the first down and gets inside the 30. Nathan Williams moves in to make the stop. Three more yards for Shad Williams on this drive. Two-minute warning is approaching. Florida, do they have one more score left in them? We'll find out when we come back to Orlando. Two-minute warning. Thirty-five, thirteen. That is the score at one time. Ten, nothing in favor of New York, and then New York burned by their turnovers tonight. Twenty-one points. Florida scored off New York turnovers. They're wrapping things up here. Shad Williams continues to get a lot of work in the final few minutes of this game. As Tatum Bell and Michael Pitt and Brooks Bollinger will all rest up for Coach Jim Haslett to get ready to play Las Vegas next week. We'll be back next Saturday night here on HDNet with two teams I figure are pretty angry. California and New York uh, as we'll be in San Francisco for that game. And you know I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward what, what I'm looking forward to in, in that game is you've got two teams that have not won a game uh, obviously second game they both lost their first is, is the adjustments that they're going to make and what the coaches are going to do with their football teams because you know uh, the, the whole thing is Okay, that this game is gone. 
you know, forget about it. Look at the mistakes you made. Look at what you can do better. And then hope like hell you can do it better the next week. Uh, Jim Haslett gets the bath. <laughs> yeah, that probably feels pretty good, I got to tell you, on this night. You want one? <laughs> I went, to, you know, about an hour ago, it had been nicer when it, before the breeze at least started whipping around up here in the upper deck of the Citrus Bowl. A crowd of over 11,000. Yeah, he probably likes having that ice in it. Tatum Bell uh, and Pittman, that Pittman for sure. Pittman for sure uh, leading the way there. I think Chase Bullock might have also been on that as Grayson will take another knee and this game goes into the books the first time in the United Football League is a victorious one for Coach Jim Haslett and the Florida Tuskers. They capitalized on the mistakes. They got the running game that Paul McGuire talked about going in the second half. And Brooks Bollinger was very impressive tonight. Four touchdown passes. Well, you know, it's nice to see Teddy Cottrell and Jim, Jim Haslett going in the middle of the field. And we didn't mention it earlier in the game, but Jim Haslett was coached by Teddy Cottrell when he was up in Buffalo. So Jim, you know, understands the man, and they are, they are truly good friends. They just want this league to succeed, and they want to see these young men Young men have a chance to move forward in their lives and maybe someday get back to the National Football League. We saw a hard played game tonight. I mean, it was a tired New York team for the last quarter and a half. They were they were running totally out of gas in this heat, but it was a hard played game uh, for most part. You know, Kenny, and, and, and you have a lot more energy when you're winning. You know, and when you when you look at, at a clock and you're down by 20 in the scoreboard, you're bound by 22 points. I'm going to tell you, it's disheartening. A big night for Florida. They're off to a 1-0 start. Simeon Rice and company on the short end of a 35-13 score.